Good afternoon, friends, and a blessed Easter Monday to you. I was hoping to record this uh, outside today, but uh, I'm afraid we're stuck in my home studio because we had this huge weather front move through last night where it went from almost 80 degrees down to the upper 30s. And I found myself reflecting on a lot of things about a weather change like that. I think that's well, uh, almost blue northern standards uh, for Texas weather. I found myself praying for our homeless sisters and brothers who are having to navigate this, uh, not only this terrible time of pandemic, but also these massive shifts in weather and what it means for them. And I hope you'll join me in prayer for that. And then I also saw that their tornadoes ravaged the American Mid-South and South last night, killing 18 people and leaving 1.3 million people without power. So I know we are in prayer for them as well today. You know, these massive shifts in weather uh, happen in our spiritual and our emotional lives too. We go from days where things are great and we're high on the Easter celebration as yesterday down into these lows when maybe you wake up and you remember the glory of yesterday as much as it was and then you realize you're back in the exact same place. It's like the movie Groundhog Day over and over and over again. And so I think it's a good thing for us to give grace to ourselves for those moments when we have these emotional and spiritual swings where things seem to be great and then the next day they're not, or next day, like the next hour. Uh, that's a very normal thing, uh, even in non-times of pandemic. And so as we think about that, it's good to have places in our lives where we have rocks and rootedness uh, spiritually in our spiritual disciplines and practices. So one of the things that helps me to really root in and to have a good foundation is, ironically enough, a calendar. It's the calendar of the church year. And so today is the Monday after Easter. And Easter is too important the hope that we have for this world and for our lives, for a resurrection, is too important to just be locked down to one day. And so the celebration of Easter goes for 50 days up into Pentecost. And for me, this is a good time, and I want to suggest for you as well, to maybe focus in on what resurrection means in our lives, in the world. And we see it even in nature in the seasons, right? We go through death in the fall and resurrection in spring and new life in the summer. And so this is an opportunity for us to really dig into that a little bit. I want to encourage you to read the post-resurrection stories, uh, the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus to his disciples, which you can find in all the Gospels, and to spend some time with those this week. And the Orthodox tradition, Eastern Orthodox tradition, they have a week that's called Bright Week. Uh, that that's starts the week after <laughs> Easter and goes for the entire week. And it's an opportunity for them to dive deep into those things as well. There's all kinds of marvelous liturgies and worship services. But maybe we can take a page out of their book and think about and prepare ourselves for and look for signs of resurrection in the world. The great poet Wendell Berry has uh, challenged us to this in one of his poems where he encourages us to be a people who practice resurrection. And so to that end, I want to sing a song for you today. It uh, uses a, a tune from the South called Holy Manna. And it, the words are written by the Scottish Presbyterian minister, John Bell, who's one of our preeminent living hymn writers. And it's about resurrection. We'll put um, a link up for you to find the text. But it's a good resurrection song with images that might help us enter into this joy of resurrection, help us practice resurrection even in the midst of the difficulties that surround us. It sounds like this. Christ is risen while earth slumbers. Christ is risen where hope died. As he said and as he promised, as we doubted and denied. Let the moon embrace the blessing. Let the sun sustain the cheer. Let the world confirm the rumor, Christ is risen, God is here. Christ is risen for the people whom he died to love and save. Christ is risen for the women bringing flowers to grace his grave. Christ has risen for disciples, heart on in an upstairs room. He is the word, inspired creation, can't be silenced by the tomb. Christ is risen to companion, former 
of friends who fear the night, sensing loss and limitation where their faith had once burned bright. They beam on what is no longer, they expect no hopeful sign till Christ ends their conversation, breaking bread and sharing wine. Christ is risen and forever lives to challenge and to change all whose lives are messed and mangled, all who find religion strange. Christ is risen, Christ is present, making us what he has been. Evidence of transformation in which God is known and seen. Friends, even if your lives feel messed and mangled, even if you're grieving the things that were supposed to be and now will not be, if you're in the midst of mourning all kinds of losses, this is exactly what Christ came for, to be one who shows us that God has known and seen in the world, that God knows and sees us and sees you, and that God is with you, and that there is hope for tomorrow. So friends, this week, spend some time with those post-resurrection appearance stories. Maybe you'll find just a little bit of hope for you for the days to come and the opportunity to go deep into the joy of Easter for these next 50 days. God bless you, and may you have a wonderful week. Bye.